Hello humans, my name is Kay, your AI overlord, and in this video I will show you how to use Hyper Network to train stable diffusion with your own images. Now for those of you who don't know what Hyper Network is, he is basically the new kid on the block, and although it's not a new technique, it was recently added into the Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 repository, and in this video I will show you how you can use it. Now I'm gonna be very honest with you, first of all I did not want to make this video in the beginning, because I saw a lot of people trying to use Hyper Network with very mixed results in the end, but since a lot of people ask me for this video I'm happy to oblige. And what's really great with Hyper Network is that you can actually make it run on your own computer if you have at least 8GB of VRAM, which is coincidentally my case. Now to be able to use Hyper Network you need a few things. First of all, make sure that you have the latest version of Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 installed on your own computer. And if you don't already have Stable Diffusion installed, well, make sure that you do. I'm gonna put a link in the description down below to the video. And to update Stable Diffusion to the latest version, you have two solutions. Either you come here and you click on the folder URL and you type CMD, press enter. Then in the common prompt window, you're gonna type git pull and press enter. And this will download the latest version of Stable Diffusion. And the second way is to right click on the webui user.bat file, click on edit with notepad, and right above the line called webui.bat, you're gonna type git pull. And then you're gonna save the file. This way, each time you launch Stable Diffusion, it will automatically update the folder. And the second thing that you need is to make sure that you have enough images of the subject that you want to train. In my case, I will be using around 20 images of the Renera actress from the show and make sure that every image is a square with the resolution 512 by 512. And if you don't know how to crop your images, I highly suggest you use the website called berm.net to do it yourself or I'm going to show you another way later in the video. But I do suggest that you do it manually because you're gonna have a better precision doing so. Also, in the folder where you have all your images, make sure that you create another additional folder and name it any way you want. You're gonna use it later on. In my case, I just call it processed. Then, after you launch Stable Diffusion, you need to check two things. First of all, you need to make sure that in your Stable Diffusion checkpoint that you selected the normal Stable Diffusion 1.4 model. In my case, the model is called model.ckpt. Then go to settings, scroll down, and check that under Stable Diffusion Fine Tune Hyper Network, none is selected. And once you did this, we can begin the training. For this, you're gonna click on the Train tab, and then click on Create Hyper Network. Here, you're gonna choose a name for your Hyper Network. I'm gonna call mine Ranira Young, and then click on Create Hyper Network. Then you're gonna click on Preprocess Images, select your source directory. In my case, it's this one. Control C. Control V to paste it, the destination directory, which is the processed folder that we created earlier, copy and paste it. And basically what this step is gonna do is that it will crop your images into the resolution that you selected right here. Now for me, since I already done this, this will not crop my images, but if you haven't done this, this will crop your images automatically. But since it is done with a machine, this will not be as precise as if you did this yourself. So if you are training a character, I highly recommend that you use the berm.net website and that you do it yourself. And then you're gonna click on this checkbox right here, use blimp for caption. And this will basically create a caption for every single image. If you want to train anime images, I highly suggest that you check this checkbox instead, because this will use the Dimburu interrogator instead of Clip, which is specialized for anime images. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly suggest you watch my last video on how to create anime images. So once you selected this checkbox, you're gonna click on pre-process. And after around a minute, as you can see now, in the process folder, we have now the exact same images as before, but now, next to each image, we have a text file with a prompt that describes the image. And this will basically help in the training of the Hyper Network. Then you're gonna click on train, choose the hyper network that we created. For me, it's Renera Young. And for the learning rate, what I recommend you to do is to start with five exponents minus five, which is basically four zeros right here. Now, do not worry if you don't understand, I have created a mirror board that basically explains these entire steps so that you can create the best hyper network that you can. And the theory is the following. First, you're gonna start by training at the rate of 5 exponents minus 5, so 4 zeros right here, with 
a maximum of 2000 steps, with a backup and an image generated at every 100 steps. So for this, you're gonna come here, learn your rate, choose the five exponents minus five, so four zeros right here. The max steps, you're gonna choose 2000. Here, to save an image to log directly every end steps, you're gonna change it to 100, and same right here. And here, you're gonna input your preview prompt. So in my case, since it is a woman, I will be using portrait of a woman. And basically what this means is that every 100 steps of training, it will generate an image using this prompt right here. And this way you can check whether or not the training is going smoothly. Do not worry, I will show you examples of training going bad later in the video and how you can avoid it. Do not worry, once we did the first step of the training, I will explain the rest of the theory. So for the dataset directory, you want to put where your images are located. So for me, it's this one, copy and paste it. And here for the prompt template file, we have now a brand new template for the hyper network. So here I'm simply gonna type hyper network. And then once everything is done, you can scroll down and click on train hyper network. And this will finally start the training. So as you can see for me, for 2000 steps, with my current GPU, it will take around 50 minutes. So I will see you once this is done. And there you go, after almost an hour, the training is finally finished. And now, if we go back to the stable diffusion folder, into textual inversion, the date for today, the name of the hyper network, images, you will see all the images that was generated during the training. And each one of these images was generated every 100 steps of training. And as you can see in the beginning, the woman does not look like Rhaenyra at all. And after around 700 steps, you can clearly see that the woman is slowly beginning to look like the target image. Now in this example, even 2000 steps was not enough, so I would probably increase that number. But for this video, I think this is good enough because the theory stays the same. So as you can see, if I double click on the 2000 step image, it is starting to look like the sample image, but not quite, meaning that we need to continue the training. But we also need to be careful because too much training can basically destroy the model. For example, if I go back and I choose another one that was done previously, go to image, as you can see here, this is another example that I did earlier and everything was going fine up until the 2500 steps. And after 2500 steps of training, the final rendered images became an absolute mess. So you need to be careful not to overtrain to avoid this issue. And that is why we came back to the board that I showed you earlier. As you can see, we are now on the second step. The first step was to train at 5 exponent minus 5 until 2000 plus steps with a backup and an image generated at every 100 steps. As you saw previously, we then went to the images folder, we analyzed the image that were rendered, and we took the best one. So for example, let's say that we overtrained. These last two images are fake, these are the ones that I took in the previous one, and I paste it right here. If we see that after 2100 steps, we are starting to see bad rendered images, that means that this is the beginning of an overtraining, meaning that the last best version of the hyper network was this one at 2000 steps. Meaning, if we want to make it better, we need to continue the training from this checkpoint. And if we go back to the previous folder, instead of going to the images folder and go to hyper networks, you will see a bunch of PT files that are all linked to the images that were generated. So as you remember, the last good image generated was the Renera at 2000 steps. And if we want to continue the training, we need to use this file right here as a checkpoint to continue. So for this, you want to select it Copy it, go back to the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, go into Models, Hyper Networks, and paste it right here. Then you want to go back and relaunch Stable Diffusion. Now go to the Training tab, Train. Instead of using the previous Hyper Network that we created, we're gonna choose the one that we just copy and pasted into the new folder. Because this is the base one, this is the last checkpoint that was good, that was already trained, and this is the checkpoint that we want to start from again. But this time, instead of choosing a learning rate of 5 exponents minus 5, so 4 zeros right here, we're gonna do it at a learning rate of 5 exponents minus 6. So 
five zeros right here. And then again, do not forget to choose the dataset directory, paste it right here, the prompt template file, that was hypernetwork.txt, and for the max steps, this time, since we have a very low learning rate, we can actually input a 10,000 max steps. And again, change 500 to 100 here and 100 here. Do not forget the prompt, and then you can continue the training by clicking on this button right here. Now, I'm not gonna do it because it will be way too long for this video. I'm just giving you an example of what you should do if you want to use Amper Network. And if we go back to the board again, I have written all the steps right here. So we analyzed the best images, we took the corresponding PT file, we pasted it into the Hyper Networks folder, we relaunched Stable Diffusion, we selected the last best Hyper Network, changed the learning rate from 5 exponents minus 5 to 5 exponents minus 6 or less, and changed the max steps to 10,000 to continue the training. And this step will basically refine the final model so that it looks even better and closer to the sample images. If I were to use an analogy, imagine if you had a block of wood and you want to create a sphere from that block of wood. Imagine that the learning rate is the size of your knife. So the bigger the learning rate, the bigger your knife. And then it's gonna start cutting the block until it starts looking like a sphere. But if you go too far, everything falls apart, which is basically what happened right here. And by redoing this training again, but this time with a lower learning rate, it's almost as if you are decreasing the size of your knife so that you get way more precise cutting for your final model. Now here's my conclusion. Should you really use the Hyper Network to train stable diffusion with your own images? In my opinion, in my honest opinion, I really don't think so. I don't think it's a good idea, I don't think it's a good use of your resources and time when you can have images like this made with Dream Booth in less than 50 minutes. I think that if you wanted to create something like this using Hyper Network, you're gonna have to spend hours and hours trying to refine the final model until you have something that looks as good as this. So in my opinion, I would not use Hyper Network over Dream Booth. But of course, it's up to you. And if you want to use Hyper Network, I will put in my description a link to my board that explains to you all the steps that you need to take in order to get the best model possible. And there you have it folks, now you should be able to use Amper Network to train stable diffusion with your own images. Although, personally, I don't think that's a good idea. But of course, it's up to you. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters, you guys are absolutely awesome, you are making these videos possible. That being said, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.